The most common problem related to variables has to do with swapping two variables. This is the classic temporary variable problem. The nature of it is that if you have two variables, let's say A, let's say A has a value of three and B, and B has a value of four, the main question with these will be, how would you swap their values? You can't just set A to B and then B to A because what this will do is when you do this step right here, A will be replaced with the value of four and its original value of three will be lost forever. So when you set B to A, you're just setting it to four, which B already has the value of. So what we have to do is we have to use a third variable to keep track of the original value three so that then we can later on swap it. That's how you do a classic temporary variable swap. So in this example, we already started out with some code. And let's say that first, which we'll just call F, let's say it has a value of three. And let's say second, which we'll just call S, has a value of four. The first thing we're gonna do here is set temp, which I'll call T, to whatever first is. So in this case, set it to three. Now we're gonna replace first with whatever is in second. So we're gonna replace this three with four. Now note that even though I replaced the value, I still have the original value down here. It's held by the temporary variable. So the last thing I wanna do is I wanna set S to whatever this value is. Luckily I have it here as part of T in the temp. So the last thing we'll wanna do is we'll want to set S to T, right? Set S to the temporary variable. And that would be this right here. This is the typical way to set up a variable swap using three variables. Since this is such a common type of problem for variables, we're gonna go ahead and do another type of this one. But this time, it actually asks you to basically write the whole thing from scratch. So let's take a look at this. Remember that the basic process for swapping two variables is that you want to use a temporary variable to keep track of a value, then you wanna do a swap, and then you wanna use that temporary variable to set the other value to the one that you held on to. What that means is just by looking at these, we'll see that this one's already doing all of these things, right? We're setting a temporary variable to A, we're overriding A with whatever B has, and then we are setting B to whatever the original value of A was, which was held here in temp. This is the right answer, but that's not too satisfying. Let's actually take a look at the other ones to see why they wouldn't work. A doesn't work because right away, we are overriding whatever A has. So we've lost the value of A right off the bat. We no longer know what A is just from the first line of code. It cannot be this one, therefore. C doesn't really work because even though we start out doing the right thing, which is to set the temporary variable to A, the next thing we actually do is just set A back to the temporary variable. That's the same value that we just set, right? So here we end up setting A to B, but what we never do is we never set B to the original value of A. So this is actually missing a step. This one's almost there. We're setting temp to A as we want to, but the thing is on step two, we override the value of B. So we lose track of whatever B has. At this point in time here, we don't know what the original value of B was, so we can't swap it. This value is lost to time, so it can't be D. Answer is therefore B. Let's move on to a pretty easy question about variables. A lot of these questions about variables are going to be about what the usefulness is of having variables, and also about what the variables don't help you do. One thing a variable does not help you do is run the program faster. Variable doesn't really impact the speed at which a program runs. Another thing that variables don't do is affect the data storage capacity. These things would be affected by other aspects of the program or your hardware like memory, things like that. Variables don't really impact that sort of thing at all. Instead, let's look at what variables do. This has two answers and these are both the answers right here. So it will help make your program easier to read if you name your variables properly. That's why you wanna name variables properly is because it'll make more sense when somebody's reading your code. And that somebody might include you. And finally, if you name your variables properly, it'll make it easier to modify in the future because it'll be easier to understand what your code is doing and what the different values and variables are. Those are really the main reasons to rename variables. Basically the gist is that renaming variables is something that you do to help the person reading the code. And that again might be you. Here's another really common type of question that gets asked about variables. This is basically checking to see if you understand how variables keep or replace their values. Basically, we have a couple of variables with some values and they change over time and it's asking you what the values are at the end of this program. This is actually a very easy type of program to evaluate if you just keep track of the values. So let's do that. You should always do this. You should never try to do these problems in your head. I'm gonna keep track of the values. R is one, S is two, and T is three, right? So at this point in time, I'm over here and these are the values. So R is going to be set to S. So this one is going to be replaced by this two. And here, S is going to be set to T. 
So here, this 2 is going to be replaced by this 3. Now notice that even though r got set to s, it doesn't affect what happens here. It copies the value. It doesn't keep track of what it's pointing to, right? So this s just gains the value that was in t, but that doesn't affect r. And now finally we get here where we're going to display the values. We're going to display r and then we're going to display s. So r is 2 and s is 3. So the answer here is c. It's really that easy, but don't try to do this in your head. Make sure you write it down. This one's pretty much the same. So let's do another one for practice here. Here the variables have different names. They're just longer names, but there's nothing really different about it. Let's, uh, let's call start s and e and current c, s, e, c. All right, so s starts at one, end starts at 20, and current starts at three. All right, so I'm at this point in the code right here, one, 20, and three. And then we're gonna set start to current. All right, so this one, gets replaced by a 3. Current becomes current plus 1, so this 3 becomes a 4. And now I'm going to display start, and I'm going to display current. So start is 3, and current is 4. That's really all there is to it. We didn't even end up using the end. Thanks for watching. I'm Flavio, and I'll be back with more soon.